it seems trial by jury is due for an overhaul. Over the course of Gerald Stanley's trial for the murder of Colton Bushi, the seemingly all-white jury received widespread criticism in a case that was racially charged from the beginning. When Stanley was ultimately acquitted, Bushi's family and indigenous communities called for justice reform. But this is far from the first time the small number of indigenous peoples serving as jurors has been questioned. And the current process of jury selection is part of the problem. Here's how it works. It varies across jurisdictions, but jury selection is pretty similar across Canada. Every year, a jury roll is compiled at random from people who are eligible for jury duty. When a case to be tried by jury comes around, people from the roll are selected at random and sent a summons calling them for jury selection. Both the Crown and the defense are allowed a certain number of what are called peremptory challenges, meaning they can reject a juror without having to give any reason. During the selection process, the judge can only ask potential jurors a few questions. So lawyers make a decision to challenge or agree on the juror based on a brief first impression and all the biases that come with it. Take the Stanley trial for instance. During the selection process, it was reported that the defense simply said challenge every time a potential juror who looked indigenous walked up. And right there, without justification, that person was excluded from the 12-person jury until it was made up entirely of white people. The only thing it can do is pander to stereotypes because you have a peremptory challenge and you know nothing about the person but what you see in front of them and maybe, you know, in their name and sometimes their occupation. You can't make a meaningful challenge based on any rational explanation. It's only, it's only stereotypes. In the wake of the Stanley trial, the Liberals announced that they would be looking into the jury selection process, including peremptory challenges. But people have been trying to address this as far back as the 80s. From 1988 to 91, Justices Murray Sinclair and Alvin Hamilton oversaw the Aboriginal Justice Inquiry for Manitoba, which came about in the aftermath of two high-profile cases involving Indigenous victims. One of the issues it looked into was the lack of Indigenous peoples on juries. The commission found several reasons. Until 1952, status Indians were unable to vote, but jury rolls were compiled from voter lists, leaving them out of the mix. And for two decades afterwards, reserve officials weren't obligated to submit names of potential jurors. And the trial by jury method doesn't necessarily fit with traditional Indigenous concepts of justice, so some opt out of participating altogether. The inquiry also mentioned language barriers, problem summoning, the list goes on and on, and peremptory challenges was one of the many problems. The commissioners did not necessarily want challenges removed entirely, but that only challenges for cause should be allowed. But recommendations like these clearly were not put into place over the last 27 years. Justice Frank Iacobucci also conducted a similar review. In 2013, he looked at the barriers First Nations people faced with juries in Ontario. He made over a dozen recommendations, one of which was that there should be an amendment to the criminal code that would prevent the use of peremptory challenges to discriminate against First Nations people. Yakabuchi made note that in the U.S., judges are able to supervise the use of peremptory challenges if they think the challenge is being used in a discriminatory manner. With the Stanley verdict, people want to see change now, like they did 30 years ago. But the question is, will the suggestions stop at a report, or will the justice system actually change? I will be optimistic when a bill actually passes. It's only when the bill passes that I will assume that something positive has occurred. We are looking at peremptory challenges. We are going to consider how we can utilize the expertise that exists in this room and across the country about how we can substantively improve the criminal justice system and um, uh, the jury selection process. 